I wanted to take a quick break from the maths videos I've been doing to talk about what is legitimately my favorite module in the world. I got it very early in my Eurorack adventures, and it's been part of practically every patch since then. A lot of people love it, but very few people know what it's actually doing, and that's why I'm here. Most people know that Triple Sloths is a source of slow, chaotic modulation. It's more complex than a simple LFO, but it has more structure than typical randomness. In some ways, it's a pretty weird module. There's no real control of it. There's just these 11 randomish outputs with no real description. But I found it to be exactly what I want for generative ambient style music. Just a quick note that, as usual, all of the diagrams in this video are available online. There's a link in the description. And there's also a link to my other channel where you'll find the music, the background music from this video, if you want to hear more of it. Normally in these videos I'd be showing patch examples, but since all Slaza does is provide modulation, there's a little less to show there. But if you stick around to the end of the video, there'll be an example of Triple Sloss providing modulation to a Three Sisters filter and Strymon Star Lab. By the time we get there, I hope you'll have a better idea of what's going on under the hood, why it does what it does, and how to make better use of it. And if any of this is exciting for you, you should check out the other modules by Nonlinear Circuits. There are dozens of them, and most of them exist to take crazy math and turn it into weird behavior to fit into your modular environment. I've built many, many of them now, and I can easily say that NLC is my favorite module designer. But let's start just by taking apart that statement, slow chaotic modulation. Compared to most LFOs, it can be really very slow. The fastest of the sloths, called torpor, but moving forward I'm just going to call it fast, repeats its cycle in 15 to 30 seconds. The medium one, apathy, cycles every 30 to 60 seconds, and the slow one, inertia, takes 30 to 40 minutes to repeat. And there are other sloth modules, like the sloth DK, that can take hours to complete a cycle. I've used the words repeat and cycle a lot, but it's important to remember that it doesn't strictly repeat. It will evolve over time and give you a similar but different chaotic pattern. But what do I mean by chaotic in this sense? I'm not going to go too deep into the math behind it or anything, but I think the module's designer, Andrew Fitch, sums it up really well in his FAQ. Chaos creates patterns but never repeats itself, so there's a path for our ears and our minds to follow, and we have some idea where it will go, but it always changes and is unpredictable. I mean, LFOs are great, but sometimes the simple oscillations get boring, and sloths is a perfect antidote for that. Let's start by asking the basic question, what is a sloth? And the quick answer is that it's a type of circuit, a pretty simple circuit actually. This is the schematic for a different sloth module, uh, just a single sloth in the 1U format, but it's the same thing. If you're not used to looking at schematics, it may not seem that simple, but those big triangles are called operational amplifiers, or just op amps. They're kind of a building block for all kinds of circuits, and all four of these will fit on a single chip. The rest of those components are just resistors and capacitors. Those just control how slowly the voltage can build and be released. With so many digital modules running software to accomplish things, it's honestly pretty amazing that so few components can do so much. So, coming back to the triple sloths module, there's really only one difference between the three sloths. They're all the same circuit, the one we just saw, they're just running at different speeds. I've showed them all here, and you can see that there's a bit of a difference with some of the CV control, otherwise they just all output what they label as X, Y, and Z. But I've changed that up in my labeling here to better explain what's happening. Let's dive into one of the slots and take a closer look. X and Y are different, but Z is just the inverted Y output. As the slot cycles around, its state is reflected in the LED as it changes colors and brightness. Now for the fast and medium slots, there's also some control, either via a knob or coming in through CV, and it's really important to remember that changing this is unlikely to make a big noticeable change. It doesn't change how fast the sloth runs or anything, it just sort of nudges how it cycles over time. Often what I do is I'll use one sloth to modulate another. We'll see that in a little bit. So now's the point where I usually fire up the Mordax data and show you the oscilloscope as things happen. But sloths run so slow, it's hard to get a good idea of how things change over time. Torpor, the fast one, isn't too bad. But look at inertia. That's a minute across the screen on the oscilloscope, and it hardly changes at all. So instead what I did is wrote a bit of software to replace the oscilloscope. And now we can see the X and Y changing over time. This is real data, I've just sped it up so we can follow it easier. You can see that they oscillate up and down in interesting ways, and it seems like there's a relationship between the two, but it's hard to get at.
So I'll stop it here showing twice as much as we had on the previous screen, and now you can see more of a pattern. The X output in green stays pretty close to zero, but the Y output in yellow behaves differently. It spends time oscillating down below zero, and then jumps up above zero and oscillates some, and then jumps back down below zero again. If nothing else, it shows that maybe the Y output has a higher voltage range than the X output, and it does. X will tend to be in the plus or minus 2.5 volt range, where Y is in the plus or minus 5 volt range. So when you're using Y or Z, an attenuator is definitely your friend. So this is cool and all, but I think there's a more interesting relationship between X and Y, and I'd like to see them plotted against each other, not just against time. The Mordax data can do that, but the slots move so slow all you get is a single pixel sliding around on the screen, and it's hard to learn much from that. But with a bit of image processing, I was able to extract the values from it, and that's what's powering these animations, like this one. Here we've got the same plot as we just saw, but beside it I'm also looking at it where that pixel is moving around using the X and Y coordinates. Now we're getting somewhere. You can see that X and Y are really traveling around this weird figure with two circles. In chaos, those circles are centered around something called an attractor. And you can see that the path starts really close to it, then spins outwards, and when it gets a certain distance away, Y changes between positive and negative, and it starts over again. Now I'm pausing here just because I love how on the left, you can see the green trace does a sudden reversal without having a nice smooth curve to it. And on the right, you can see that there's this weird little hitch where it decides to go back on itself. Generally, it's just going to cycle around those two attractors, but every so often it's going to do something different. But from this you can now see what we mean by a cycle of the sloth. That's one trip around both of those attractors. And you can tell it's not just going to repeat itself. The next cycle is going to be a little bit different than the previous one. One last thing while I'm geeking out about animations. This one shows a regular sloth compared to one that's being modulated by another sloth via the CV input. You can see that it's doing basically the same thing, except that it's skewed a little bit. The spirals aren't as concentric, they're skewed to one side, the whole thing is shifted down just a little bit. These are the sorts of changes that occur when you modulate a sloth. It just makes the chaos slightly more chaotic. And one more thing to discuss is these last two outputs at the bottom, labeled diff plus and diff minus. These are a combination of all three sloths. In particular, it takes the Z outputs, adds them or subtracts them, and then compares that result to zero. One thing to really notice is that when it adds voltages together, it could end up adding 5 volts to 5 volts and outputting 10 volts at the end. These outputs can be a little extreme, so attenuation is pretty much required. Now, the diff plus output should be zero unless that sum is positive, and the diff minus output should be zero unless the sum is negative, but in practice it isn't quite like that. The documentation says it should be zero, quote, ignoring voltage drops, and I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it does seem to make a pretty big difference. Again, it's important to say that there's no microcontroller here. This isn't being done via code, it's just voltage moving around inside a circuit. So it's subject to everything, up to and including me building it wrong. Well, let's take a look at that, and you knew that I couldn't do a video without a shot of the Mordax data doing its thing. Here we see the diff plus output in green, and the diff minus output in blue. Notice that while blue is wandering around in the negative range, green is staying pretty close to zero. And when green moves up into the positive range, it's blue that stays closer to zero. Okay, time to wrap things up. We learned a lot about how sloths behaves, and it's worth recapping. First, the X outputs are the lowest. They stay in the plus or minus 2.5 volt range and tend to oscillate around zero. The Y output, on the other hand, stays in the positive range for a while, then down to negative, then back up to positive. It doesn't spend all that much time close to zero, and as a result, the voltages tend to cover a wider spread from plus to minus 5 volts. The diff outputs are a combination of all three sloths, which makes it the most varying of the outputs, but it can lead to some pretty crazy CV levels, plus or minus 10 volts. And that's triple sloths, 
I hope that you enjoyed this video going under the hood of one of my favorite modules. If you've watched this far, maybe consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.